Hello, everybody. So, so yeah, so what you just heard was me playing the Winnie the Pooh theme, which I thought was the perfect song for me to play. But yeah, it's Eric Virthaler of <laughs> Virthaler Studios, and I'm here with a very special guest. Please introduce yourself. Oh, well, hello. I am Eddie McKenzie. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, yeah, um, it's definitely a pleasure to have you here. And uh, and yeah, and I definitely want to give you a thank you to the like for taking time out of your day to be here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course, anytime. So question number one, uh, assuming you were a fan of Winnie the Pooh be, before being cast as Piglet, what were some of your favorite cartoons in in said franchise? Oh, um, yeah, well, for sure. I was definitely a fan of Winnie the Pooh growing up. Um, I had, you know, the books and some of the toys, etc., etc. And I really loved a lot of the films that they made. Um, I think my favorite ones were probably uh, they did a very good version of uh, basically animating straight from the books. So it was very much the, tra the traditional tales. Oh, hello. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> All right, sorry. Stand by. All right. Go on, Simba. But yeah, I definitely do apologize about that. But anyways, hey. you were saying. Yes, indeed. Um, you know, I really loved uh, the sort of traditional uh, stories. You know, they did a wonderful film where it was basically animating from the books and it was telling all the tales of uh the blustery day and then the big rainstorm and uh you mm -hmm. know pool getting stuck in the tree and heffalumps and woozles and all the classics you know um but i think my favorite winnie the pooh thing was um one of the early films from maybe like um, I can't remember when it would have come out, but it's um it's one of the ones where Christopher Robin has to go to skull uh, or school in this case, and all the all the creatures are like, "Oh, Christopher Robin's gone!" And they go on a wild adventure to try and hunt him down. And it got pretty dark at some points. There's a there's a bit where they're stuck in a sort of thorny uh, thicket, and there's monsters and things. And I I remember watching this as a kid, being pretty freaked out by what Pooh and gang were getting up to. Um, mm -hmm. So no wonder I'm now involved in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the spooky nonsense that's happening now. Oh dear. So yeah, and, and so because of that, with that in mind, I guess you can say that on your end, like that, it really came full circle, huh? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Weird, weirdly, yeah. Very nice. Actually, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I can't imagine that. Never once, like, like, did you ever think that you would, like become a member of like the Winnie the Pooh legacy, but in not in a way that you were expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you never imagined any of this, really. It's all been quite wild. Um, and, um, you know, you, I've always been a fan of Piglet as well, which is weird. He's, he was uh -huh. always, I always sympathized because I was quite a, you know, I was quite a shy, quite a quiet, nervous kid. And I was like, oh, Piglet, you know, he's the same, but he can be brave. And he was very inspiring. Um, and so it's especially weird to not only be part of, like, the Winnie the Pooh thing, but, like, in such a <laughs> spooky capacity. It's very mm -hmm. surreal. Very surreal. Oh, definitely, <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, and uh, I actually saw the movie, like, in theaters, like, on opening night. And, and, and yeah, and, and I definitely loved what, what they did with your look like with Ooh. the makeup and all that. Yeah. It was incredible. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The team, the prosthetics team were unbelievable. Sensational stuff. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, thanks for answering that. My next question I've seen on your Instagram that you do comedy. Uh, who were your inspirations for that? Oh, well, um, so I, I I draw inspiration from a whole range of things, but um, it's sort of, it's it's kind of mostly musical comedy, so that most inspirations tend to be people like that. I think uh, the first big one was uh, was was Jack Black, Tenacious D, mm -hmm. that yeah. kind of vibe. That is, that is a big influence. Um, and then you've got people like, uh, more recently, Bo Burnham, um, mm -hmm. uh, Tim Minchin, these kind of guys, you know, 
Um, um, who else have we got? The Axis of Awesome. Um, uh, Lonely Island, like any of these, you know, uh, when, uh, and the Lonely Island sort of especially so, and Bo Burnham as well, where they got so big online and they were so, they were my kind of age, you know, and I thought, ah, oh, these guys are just doing it themselves and they're making crazy videos and doing all the wonderful stuff. And so that was very inspiring growing up with those kind of people. Um, you know, we've got some great British acts as well. Uh, there's a guy, uh, Bill Bailey. Do you know Bill Bailey? Um, that name definitely rings a bell, but uh, I believe I might uh, have like a better, uh, uh, what's the word, rec collection if I, if I am reminded of some of the projects they have worked on. Well, so uh, Bill Bailey is probably one of the most well-known um, British musical comedians. He's he's been in some films. He's um, uh, he's been in a lot of TV, TV comedy. Um, he's very he's got a very iconic look. He's got like a little goatee and a lot of hair. He looks he's like a British Tim Minchin kind of um, right. big big hairy musician man. Um, um, he's wonderful. Uh, who else have we got? There's a guy called uh, Mitch Ben as well, another great British act. Um, yeah, just. Basically, all these kind of people, you know, um, funny, musical, may maniacs. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, um, you know, now that you mention all of your inspirations after seeing your Instagram post, now it all makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone makes that's sense. big, bold, loud, outrageous, I love it all. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, definitely. <laughs> So, yeah, um, uh, my next question was going to be, I've seen you're a musician. Who are your influences of that? But I kind of feel like that your last question already answers. Oh, that's yeah. Right. yeah, we've done a little crossover. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ooh. Very good. So, yeah, so would there, would there maybe be some other people who have influenced you, like as far as the music goes, the people who you didn't mention, like during your last question or... Yeah, well, um, so the, the the music side of things is um, I'm in a band as well, um, and that's definitely a kind of separate thing to the comedy. I think we take ourselves a little more seriously uh, than I might take myself. Um, and I suppose yeah, we 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 are we we started as a punk band, and we've sort of evolved over the years. You know, we take in a lot of influences. Um, at the moment, we're we're almost. Um, we're not quite, but we're almost becoming a metal band because we've uh -huh. got a lot of we've got a lot of breakdowns, mm -hmm. and we've got um, I'm I'm doing a lot of heavier vocals, and um, we're sort of leaning into kind of noise rock, kind of post hardcore stuff. Um, I don't know. We just we just pull a lot of influences from all sorts of things, um, and uh, we, basically we just want it to be energetic and fun, and uh, you know kind of scare people a little bit if we can get away with it, you know. Um, <laughs> but, but I don't know, my, I, I like a lot of music. I, I am a big music fan, but I suppose it's, you know, um, all the kind of classic punk bands and rock bands and all the really good stuff from my youth. Um, you know, things like uh, early influences would be like Guns N' Roses, mm -hmm. uh, Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath. You know, all the all the really good guys. Um, and then punk bands like, you know, Dead Kennedys, Stiff Little Fingers, um, Black Flag, all these people, you know, just, I, I it's, it's essentially, I got into music quite late because I didn't really have a musical upbringing. Like in the house, it was kind of like, you know, classical music or like talk radio or that kind of right. thing. So when I started discovering music, I went wild and I was like, into all sorts of things and I discovered rock and roll and then I discovered metal and then like I'm kind of I'm kind of a bit more mellow these days. I'm really into like hip hop and stuff. I'm getting into like electronic things. Right. And, you know, it's always evolving. We're always discovering new sounds and stuff. Um but I've gotta say things like uh you know Tenacious D, Iron Maiden, the old ones are still the best. You know, good old rock and roll. You can't oh, yeah. kill you can't Definitely. kill the metal. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. And, and especially considering that 
those were some of the bands like that I feel like really set like the template I like for bands to follow afterwards. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, and it's funny you, you say scaring people is because I feel like that that correlates like to your role in the, the Winnie the Pooh horror film sequel <laughs> and so you know okay. and, and so you know I, um i guess that your life just really you know i, I guess it just really correlates back to it <laughs> it is it is all funny it's all circular very mm -hmm. strange yeah <laughs> so yeah so uh so yeah so you mentioned that your family was more of like in classical music uh were they approving like of you being into like metal and all that or what it um well i think my i remember um coming home from like the record shop the music store and like i had bought a bunch of cds and i was showing my mum and my dad comes in and he looks at one and he goes oh edward not the sex pistols oh <laughs> as if it was like the worst thing i could have done um <laughs> <laughs> and then you know when I when I got into like um, sort of Metallica, Linkin Park, or you know kind of he heavier stuff over the years, and they, my my dad always referred to it as just noise. You know, I don't think he ever, he never really understood why I listened to it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my mum was a bit more musical. She was into like Bruce Springsteen, and right. um, she liked a little bit of kind of like Aha and sort of power pop stuff. So. When we were in the car, she would sometimes play music, but my dad was very much like, um, I don't know, he was never very musical. So he, he just thought it was all alien. Um, didn't understand any of the stuff. Um, I could have been playing the Beach Boys and he'd have still said it was a riot. You know, it was uh, it's too heavy for him, which is, uh, well, that's it. It's a very classic dad behavior, I think. <laughs> right, yeah, of course. And I feel like that for a lot of people growing up who are in the heavy metal, I feel like that that's something that a lot of people can relate to. It's like having those parents like who don't approve of it. And I also feel like people can relate to that lie, like about horror films as well. So, you know, it's just one of those things is that's just going to carry on, I suppose. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's always going to be parents always confused about what their kids are doing. Uh, <laughs> it all cycles on exactly yeah you know it's just how it is i suppose but yeah thank you for answering those uh so so since that the movie just came out i feel like that you are more free to talk about you know the movie itself so were there any funny onset moments that you would like to share uh from, from your experience making winnie the pooh blood and honey too Ooh, um, I mean, it was a very pretty tight shooting schedule, so there wasn't really a lot of chance to like um, get silly and kind of hang around and get into nonsense. Um, but a, a lot, a lot of the funny stuff was just you know you'd be you'd be sat in makeup, and it took about an hour, hour and a half to get all the pieces on. So you'd just be sort of sat there talking to the other cast members and the crew and the makeup team and you just and this would be you know two in the morning you're getting your makeup put back on you know it's getting retouched and we're all just delusional with tiredness and you just you just you just start talking about any old nonsense and it's kind of like um uh, i don't want to say you know it's like you had to be there kind of vibe but it's just it's stuff that was like funny in the moment and then you try and talk about it later and people are like what <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know like there was a mo there, there was a moment where we 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 broken for dinner time and we had our food and it was like uh like chicken and rice or something like that and the problem was uh I had my makeup on so I had this massive prosthetic nose right here and I couldn't see my mouth and I don't know if you've ever tried to eat without being able to see your mouth but when the fork you're trying to get the fork in and you you have, you have to kind of you have to kind of guess. Oh my where, god. And you suddenly realize how much peripheral vision you use just just eating. And I was like because I've got this big nose here and I'd be like uh, uh <laughs> trying to, trying to, and I got most of the rice down me and I'd just be trying to like get it in under the nose and it's just and this is like 
you know, midnight and we're like, ah. Oh my <laughs> I God. Just, I just want some chicken, man. You know, and you, you suddenly, it's just, oh, it's weird. You know, these, the things that you do for, for, for the pursuit of art. <laughs> oh, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. But yeah. Uh... So stuff like that, you know, and it's, it's like, you know, somebody's lost a bit of costume or something and you have to try and figure things out. It's, the weird things that happen at two in the morning on a film set is that kind of vibe. Oh, definitely, yeah. And that's something that I can relate to. It's because I, around 10 years ago, I actually played a zombie in a movie. And, and I had tons of makeup on. And I remember it was boiling hot. And I, and yeah, and that also was a low budget film. And so it was you know, a very tight schedule. So, oh, yeah. So, yeah. And so that's something that I can relate to. And, and, and yeah, and similar to you, I remember like having to deal with things like that. Like I remember when it was lunch break, I remember that I was trying to not get like the makeup on my food because I don't think that that would taste all that pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so... It's the things people, people don't think about it. You know, they think it's all glitz and glam and the height of luxury and then you're trying to not get makeup <laughs> on your food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is funny. But yeah, oh. so so look at your IMDb. I saw you did shorts before Winnie the Pooh, Blind Honey 2. What was mm. your experience like on those films? Well, I, so uh, probably like over the last 10 years, I've done a whole lot of uh, short films, student films, kind of low budget stuff, and so only, only a few of them made it onto IMDb, as you can see. But I've done a, a lot of weird projects, and um, it definitely it teaches you a lot. I think when you do, um, especially when you're doing low and zero budget stuff, especially you really all have to kind of work together. It really becomes a team effort, you know, and you can't you can't be uh, precious about anything. You know, you can't oh, yeah. just be sat there going, well, I'm the actor, so I'm not going to do... You know, sometimes there were scenes where I was holding the boom for people. And um, I remember one film where I did my scene and then it was like a it was a two. So it was back and forth camera angles. And so while they were doing theirs, I was helping do the zoom, uh, zoom focus. You know, it's things like this where you become part of the crew and you just go, can I help? Yep, cool. There you go. Uh, yeah. you even just you're even just making tea sometimes, you know. But when you when you're especially when you're working with friends, you know, you really cut corners and you do what you got to do to get the film done. Um yeah, and I mean some of them on um I think at least two of them on IMDb haven't been released yet. They're still in post-production hell, you know, trying to get the thing finished. So that's another thing as well. Sometimes you work work on a film for months and months and then you know it, you never see anything um so it's a very strange business sometimes um mm -hmm. and you, you you know a lot of people don't don't really understand when i talk about the job that i do and you know they, they, they all all the extra time that you you don't know about it's very strange um but yeah i think i've enjoyed all the stuff i've done you know it's a great experience um, and it's all led to Piglet, baby. Mm -hmm. yep. and, uh, <laughs> it's all paths along the way. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. And as far as having people do multiple things, that's something that I relate to, like with all the films I have made, like, um, like one of my actors in the movie that I am almost done filming now, like he's not only an actor, but in, in some of the shots, like he's holding the boom mic and, and I mean, heck, even when they made the original Halloween, like there, there are people like doing more than one task at a time on that one as well. And, and yeah. And, you know, and little did they know like that the original Halloween, like would go on to become what it is. And so Oh yeah, yeah. You just, you just gotta stuck in. You gotta help out. You gotta get the thing done. That's it. Team effort. Exactly. Yeah. And one of the best feelings about you know making movies is that just just knowing why like the kick of dopamine that you get as soon as you get it all done. 
Oh, yeah. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> the phrase, that's a wrap, folks. Oh, yes. Done. Amazing. Yeah. And, and yeah, especially knowing that you put all that hard work into it and then, you know, just crossing your fingers, just hoping that it's all going to pay off. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit of magic. It really is beautiful. <laughs> that it is. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So for some of those ones like that are still in post, do you think uh, you might know of when that we might expect to see them? Well, um, so they're very optimistic. The director, um, well, I think the flux one is almost finished. The director keeps putting out updates saying, you know, we're, we're doing this, we're editing this, we're doing such and such. So hopefully, you know, I think the plan is to get that one out soon. Um, one or two of the other ones, I think there's a lot of um, just production issues in general where they're not quite even finished yet or, or uh, you know. And it's all these issues that come up with, with, with creative work when you've got so many people involved. I think they can be a complete logistical nightmare, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's it's it is uh, it's just one of these things where a lot of the times you've got a great idea, you've got people that want to work on it, and you just can't can't get it done, and it's it's a uh, it's just a nightmare, you know. But it's yeah, a part part of the industry we're in. It's a, a tricky old business, you know, trying to get these yeah. projects done. <laughs> that so is, hopefully yeah. soon. Hopefully soon. I think the the flux one is a very fun idea, and it's all you know time travel and different dimensions and all sorts awesome. of cool stuff. Um, and that it's basically like almost everyone who is a Scottish actor I, is in it. So it's like everyone's worked together. Uh -huh. We're just we're just desperate for it to come out, you know. So mm -hmm. hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. I'm 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 optimistic, but we'll see. It's all in their hands. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, the best thing we can do is just, you know, it's just wait, I guess. <laughs> that is it. Patience. Oh, patience, yeah. it, patience is a virtue. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Ooh. All right. Thank you so much for answering that. So what's the best concert you have ever been to? Oh, okay. Um, I've been to quite a few cool gigs over the years. Um, ooh, let's think. Recently, um, so recently I saw, well, last year were two of the best gigs I've ever been to, which was um, The Darkness and Blackstone Cherry on the same bill. Um, and then I saw uh, Weird Al Yankovic doing, oh. in, in like a very intimate theater doing his originals so it was like no parodies no covers it was all his original material with just him and like a little band and we were just sat there and it was so cool and everyone was singing along and it was just the biggest room of nerds i've ever been in it was beautiful <laughs> we all knew the words we were all like we're now yes and it was just it's just one of those experiences you know and then every, everyone I knew was there. Like I kept bumping into other comedians and actors and all sorts. And I was like, "Oh, we're all nerds. Yes, beautiful." Um, I think I think though the best uh, musical concert I've ever been to was not not last year, but the year before, twenty two. Was uh, I saw The Cure in an open air park concert, and it was just. Oh my, they played for about three hours and wow. like they started and it was daytime. So they like, as they played, it became dark and then they started going into like bigger songs and more dramatic stuff. And it was just like nighttime came and it was just, I'm stood in a field listening to Robert Smith and it's, <laughs> ah, it's amazing. That, I think that is still one of my favorite like concert experiences. It was just because they played like everything and they did it for hours and they were all amazing. And they're just, the Cure are just such a legendary band, you know? Oh, definitely, and, yeah. Um, and I didn't think I'd ever see them. And then they came to Glasgow and my friend got me a ticket and I was like, oh my God. So it was just all beautiful. Um, and you know, I'd love to see them again, but that was perfect. Just so cool. 
one of one of those just you know you're stood in just a sea of people and you go this is what music is all about we're all just connected and it's this beautiful moment of just everyone's experiencing this so cool oh <laughs> stuff that's like amazing. that man that's what yeah. it's all about that's amazing especially considering that I have been to a lot of concerts like where I'm really excited to see a band and then unfortunately it turns out that because of time constraints that they don't sing some of the songs that I was wanting them to sing and so knowing that when he went to that concert knowing that they sung every one and oh. and because it was three hours long like it really gave them the that advantage like a lot like to get to all the songs like that people want to hear and it's also funny you mentioned weird out because i actually have seen him twice oh very nice <laughs> but yeah um the first time i saw him live i remember like that the whole room went black and, and then as soon as it got lit up again he was wearing like a spongebob costume <laughs> <laughs> oh it was hilarious <laughs> it was so funny <laughs> oh he is just an icon oh, oh definitely what yeah. a guy <laughs> yeah, speaking of Weird Al, uh, they actually recently, well, biopic, even though it's more exaggerated, but uh, have you watched that? Oh, you, the, the one that? with oh, Daniel yeah. Radcliffe. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, I've seen that. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> entirely based on real events. Yeah, nothing. Oh, definitely, nothing. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all that really happened in real life. <laughs> All true story, no exaggeration. There. Which is what <laughs> Very I was, silly. Which is what I thought was so genius about the movie is that knowing that Weird Al was known for doing parodies of songs, while when they did the movie about him, that actually was a parody like a biopic. So I'm like, that was genius. Oh, he's on so many levels. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was great. I really enjoyed it. Uh, they, I think they they like nailed the tone just perfectly. Silly, silly movie. Oh, definitely, yeah. And I'm actually so surprised that that did not get a theatrical release. But I am sure that they might have had their reasons for it. Yeah, it's it was a weird one, but you never know. You know, there's all these things going on behind the scenes, people in big boardrooms making decisions. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I guess we just. Gotta, you know, just go with the flow, I guess. But yeah, thank you for answering that. So what's your favorite go-to movie that you can always have a laugh with? Oh, hello. Um, well, I think one one of my favorite um, comedies, I suppose, that I always go back to, um, I'm, I always love watching High Fidelity. Mm -hmm. um, because... As a as a music fan and a Jack Black fan, it's a it's a very uh, combining a lot of my interests, you know. Um, but I just find it great, you know. It's it's got a very compelling story, great characters, um, and like I don't know. I just it's 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 a lot of my interests all together, you know. High fidelity. Um, I mean. Another one, I suppose, is um, uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, which I consider to be the single package. Yeah, uh, would be it would be another film that I just I can watch that again and again. You know, I I and I do <laughs> quite often. Uh, <laughs> the Lord of the Rings, love it, loved it ever since the, I saw it in the cinemas when it came out. I was mm -hmm. like at the right age to be like, whoa, right, of um, course. and it just totally blew my mind. Um, yeah, I don't know. I love so many films. I can never. It's always hard to think because there's just like, right, of course, Whoa, so many. But um, yeah, those are probably the big ones. You know, High Fidelity. Uh, oh, I, I mean, I'm I'm a complete Jack Black madman. Um, I really love Nacho Libre as well, which, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which like nobody I know likes Nacho Libre, apart from my my flatmate currently, who's the only person I know mm -hmm. who likes Nacho Libre. All my other friends are like, get that out of my face. Get that out of here. They don't like it at all. And nobody appreciates the art of, of Nacho Libre. But it's just, I love it. It's so stupid and silly 
and just it is it is it is again it's Jack Black just being allowed to be like yeah and uh, <laughs> very silly. Um, I suppose the answer probably is just anything he's in. I really am a fanboy. It's terrible, you know. Um, but he's wonderful. He's just entertaining. Oh, oh, he gets me. <laughs> oh yeah. So, so yeah. So certainly he is somebody like if you had the chance to do a movie with him, you would say yes like that. Oh my god! If if meeting him would be an absolute dream come true. I oh. Oh my God! To work with him, oh, <laughs> don't, don't even. Right? <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I'd be the happiest boy. <laughs> oh, I can imagine so, but yeah, that's pretty much me. Like with Jim Carrey, like I like mm. like pretty much like what Jack Black is to you, Jim Carrey is to me, and, and so yeah, so if I had my chance to, to to work with Jim Carrey, that would be a dream come true as well. Oh, again, he is just like, he is like funny bones personified. He can, he's just amazing. Jim Carrey. Very oh, good Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like with like his <laughs> facial ex expressions and all that. Yeah. Like it's incredible. Like Jim Carrey's pretty much like, he, he's pretty much like a living, walking cartoon character. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That is it. Oh my God. Just like the run of films that he's had. What a career. Oh, yeah. definitely, yeah, and Ooh. and you you mentioned Lord of the Rings. It's hard for me to take it seriously. It's because I saw the South Park parody of it, and so after I saw the South Park, parody, <laughs> like I like, it's just hard for me to take Lord of the Rings seriously now. I get you, I get you. <laughs> oh God, I swear, <laughs> that is one of the funniest South Park episodes I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it is very good. <laughs> yeah, and it makes me feel old knowing that the Lord of the Rings like came out like the early two thousands, and that was twenty years ago now. So wow, oh, that is yes. crazy, right? It's it's pretty nuts. Ooh, that it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so you were involved with Winnie the Pooh, Blind Honey too, but not the original. So. So before you got involved with the sequel, uh, did you see the original movie? And and what were your thoughts on the uh, original movie? Well, I I didn't see the original until I had gotten the the announcement that I was cast in the second one. Um, I was aware of it though. I knew I knew that Blood and Honey was a thing, um, and some friends of mine. Um, had just been to see it. They had a they had a screening here in Glasgow at like mm -hmm. a like a little independent art house cinema. So it was all very weird because my friends had gone to see it, and then about a week later, I get the email offering me the part, and I was like, oh okay, maybe I should watch this film. And so we sat down and we watched it in the in the daytime uh, where it was safe, and uh, <laughs> I, I thought it was pretty good. You know, I'd heard so much about it you know it was it was already like cult at this point um and yeah i sat down we watched it and um i thought it was a lot of fun i thought um you know it was a very cool idea um it was very gruesome, oh, <laughs> you know? very gruesome. Oh, some of the kills like whoo, whoo, whoo. um and um i watched it, it was my flatmate i watched it with and he's a photographer man and he was commenting on how good the lighting is throughout Blood and Honey. Um, and it just goes to show you that the, the, the cinematography was, was there. Like the, the, the concepts and the ideas were there. Even with such a low budget, they were still pushing what they could do. And they were trying to make, you know, they were trying to make as good a movie as they could. Um, mm -hmm. ob obviously, they had a small, small budget. So there are moments where you're like, hmm. Um, but... Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun, and I think that is why it's become such a cult thing because people are just like ah, they they connect with it on some level, um, and then to be involved in this second one has just been astronomical, unbelievable. Oh yeah, definitely. Like when I first heard about the original, honestly, when I saw like those articles pop up on Facebook about it, 
I thought that maybe it was like a fan film. It's because at that time, I actually didn't know the, like that the original Winnie the Pooh book fell under the public domain. And, and, and so that's why I thought it was a fan film at first. But it wasn't until when I saw the posters and trailers for it, I was like, okay, I don't think this is a fan film. So I was like, how in the world are they getting away with this without being sued by Disney? And so then I did research on it. I was like, ah, oh, that makes sense because the, the original book became public domain, even though that I already knew what public domain was, but it really was that original movie like that really got me to really consider more like about what I can do with the public domain. And really it's because the original movie is why that I thought of the idea that for my channel that like that whenever I'm too busy with college, how about that I will, how about that for three times a week on my channel, I actually will upload public domain movies onto my channel. Ooh, yeah, very good idea. Oh yeah, definitely. But yeah, just so in that way that I can still put out content and you know and keep my viewers satisfied without me actually having to find the time to make those videos. So yeah. I, I mean I mean like you say it's in the movie has inspired you and I think so many people have been inspired in similar ways because it's just it's just untapped, you know. It's a great idea. They've gone. You can just take this, and you can make stuff. And it's it's the rehashing of old ideas that's so cool. And I think so many people are now going to go out with a camera and make a movie and take an old idea and make a new thing out of it. And it's beautiful. It's like recycling culture. It's very exciting. Exactly. Yeah. And it. it and I feel like that I got all the attention is because we saw Winnie the Pooh and all the other characters in an environment that they never were in before, which and then really caught people's attention and including mine. And then and then afterwards, they and then announced they're doing a Mickey Mouse horror movie and they, they announced a Grinch horror movie. And so it's going to be a very exciting times, I think. Definitely. Yeah. So thank you for answering that. So. I saw that your agent actually helped you get the role like a piglet. Uh, how did you get involved with that agency? And what would be your advice like to any actor like who wants to get an agent? Yeah, um, um, I mean, uh, she was pretty much entirely the reason that I got uh, the role. Um, the first that I heard about it was uh, she texted me. Uh, saying, I've got, a, I've emailed you about a job, go and check out the email. And normally that means uh, it's like an audition or it's, you know, it's something I've got to go take a look. So I was like, all right, okay, let's see what this is. And um, it was the subject line was Blood and Honey 2. And I went, Blood and Honey 2? The, the Winnie the Pooh film? Ooh, this could be interesting. And I opened it up and the email was basically just, uh, if Eddie is still interested, we'd like to cast him in the role of Piglet. And I didn't know that I was interested to begin with. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> I, I suddenly was very interested, you know. Um, and basically, it turns out that she, they'd put a casting call out looking for, you know, uh, we want uh, people of this size, this shape, this like, uh, location, et cetera, et cetera. And she went, oh, I'll put Eddie forward for that. And they've apparently looked through all the freaks and weirdos and they've gone, that one, we'll take him. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that strange little man will be our pig, pig boy. And because um, I didn't audition, I didn't, I didn't talk to any of them until the filming, really. Like, I think there was an email at one point, but I didn't speak to Scott or Reese in person until the filming. So it was very surreal. And I, I kept wondering, like, you know, is this real? Am I going to be... Am I going to turn up and they'll go, oh, wait, you're not who we want. You know, there was all these thoughts coming in. Um, but bless her. She, she's a wonderful agent. She's called Victoria Stephen. And she's Victoria Stephen Management here in Scotland. Um, and it's interesting because I, uh, we've had a bit of a history because I almost got signed to her sooner. Um, but I, I, when I, this was years ago when I was like, um, sort of doing a younger, a younger man. And I'd applied to a bunch of agencies and I'd emailed a bunch of people and um, she didn't get back to me straight, like, initially. So I went with someone else 
And then she got back in touch and was like, oh, sorry, I've been you know busy doing this. I'd love to talk to you about it. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I've gone with these other people. And she was like, oh, that's wonderful. You know, feel free to get in touch another time. And um, turned out the people I went with were completely useless and um, didn't do anything good. And so I left them pretty sharpish. Um, and so a while later, she put out on Twitter saying, um, my books are open again. I'd love to meet you people. And I emailed saying, oh, hello. I don't know if you remember me. We talked last year, et cetera, et cetera. And she went, oh, my God. Hello. Yes. Wonderful. And then ended up signing to her. And I've done various things. You know, I've been uh, uh, Father Christmas a couple of times and we've gotten a couple of various things. And then this piglet thing has come along. Um, so it really has uh, having an agent really does make a lot of things easier. And um, in, ter in terms of getting one, your question in terms of getting one, I think um, it might it might not be the same in other places. But generally, I think social media is a good place to start. Um, have a look at, you know, uh, agencies in your in your country or, you know, if you're lucky enough in your city that you live in, you know, if you live in like London or L.A. or Los Angeles, you know, there'll be agents everywhere. Um, yeah. But basically get online, give it a Google, find uh, uh, good, good, like reputable looking agents. And if you follow them on Twitter and social media in general, um, what, what they'll do is they'll just they'll announce when their books are open, when they're looking for people, because they don't take people on all the time, generally. So you've got to kind right. of wait until until they're accepting people. And, um, you know, you don't want to bombard people with emails anyway. It's rude. Of course, yeah. Blackballed. So, yeah, have a look, do some research, find agents you like the look of, follow them on social media. And then when they announce that they are uh, looking for people, that's when you get in touch and you go, hello, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm such and such diddly do and be nice and polite and friendly and wonderful. Um, and that's, I mean, that's how I got mine, really. But um, I suppose if you're lucky enough to live in, you know, one of the big metropolitan places, you know, London, New York, L.A., et cetera, um, there's always workshops and networking meetings and things like that where you can physically go and meet people. And yep. I've, been, I've been to a few things like that because um, for a while I was with an extras agency and that's how I got with them. I went to a casting day in Glasgow and you met them and you did all this, you did all that. So um, if, if, if you find something like that, go along. Networking is great. You know, you never know who you're going to meet. Um, it's, it's a people industry. And if you don't meet people, you don't do anything. <laughs> You know? exactly, yeah, so. uh, <laughs> yeah it, exactly like being in the film business really truly is about networking like and knowing people and so oh yeah like so oh, many yeah. people ask me uh you know how, how how did you get this piglet role and i'm like well it's because it's because i've grafted for 10 years previously you know it's it didn't just happen overnight. You know, it's all the other things you've done before and it's meeting people and it's getting out there and it's having the confidence and the experience. And, you know, I've done previous films, so I've got a showreel and they've been able to see the showreel. And it's all these years of experience and cumulative stuff added together goes great, wonderful, right time, right place, piglet. And that's that's how it is. A lot of luck as well, I think. A lot of, a lot of luck. But um, preparedness and um, just being a nice person, really. You know, if people don't want to work with you, they won't work with you. That's another big thing. Exactly, so, yeah. you got to be a delight. And that's the big one. Exactly, yeah. Uh, not to mention any names, but there are people in, in the business like you have it, like you have that reputation of being difficult to work with and then it's no surprise why that we no longer saw them in films and, and so yeah uh i actually am cur currently learning the 48 laws of power and law number five states your reputation is everything guard it with your life mm, yes yes it is what what is it they say it it takes it takes a lifetime to create a reputation and a moment to destroy it. Yeah, like exactly. Something like this. <laughs> yeah, like... And it is just, just a moment of, you know, 
bad, bad behavior can done. You know, it's it's crazy. Exactly. It just within seconds, it can just, you know, be ruined and, and it may take years to fix it or, or even worse, you may never fix it. So yeah. it's it's just entirely people people based business. That's what it is. And you gotta get on with people. That's how it is. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> thank you so much for answering those. My final question, is there anything that you want to plug in? Ooh, well, um, I I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm doing all sorts of things. I think, um, first of all, come and see Blood and Honey 2 if it releases in your area. Um, I believe it's going to Australia and Mexico and Japan later in the year, which is very exciting. Um and hopefully we'll get some more screenings and hopefully it will be online at some point as well. Um, they're talking about a DVD release as well, which is very exciting. Awesome. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be on a DVD, baby. <laughs> it's crazy. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> absolutely nuts. Um, so obviously Blood and Honey 2, yes, yes. Um, apart from that, I am online. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a comedian. I'm a creator. I'm a musician. I do all sorts of nonsense. Um, I don't know when uh, this episode will uh, air, but um, I'm going to be in New York at the start of this, well, now, this week, good Lord, um, for for a few gigs, which is quite mad. Um, but, uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll get back to America another time. Um, but it's, it's Tartan Week in New York, you see, so we're getting a bunch of Scottish comedians across to do some gigs in the Big Apple, so that'll be exciting. Um, what else have I got? Uh, just yeah, find me on social media. You know, I've got a I've got a band called Panda Car. They'll be very happy that I've referenced them. Um, I always get in trouble when I don't mention the band. So mm -hmm. there we go. <laughs> Come and yeah. find us, Panda Car. We are wonderful. We're very good fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just uh, social media is the best thing. Come and find me. See what I'm up to, and uh, you'll be able to catch some of the nonsense hopefully oh yeah definitely. so <laughs> if you're allowed to talk about this they did announce a winnie the pooh blood and honey three uh are you going to be involved with that well yeah you know no, i don't uh, i um yeah I, I mean i they haven't said really what i can and can't talk about to any huge degree but it's more you know i don't want to spoil anything about things but basically the bottom line is um that these uh, 100 acre wood creatures it's very hard to kill them off so you don't you worry i i think little piglet will be <laughs> he'll be <laughs> he'll be snorting his way back onto the <laughs> screen at some point soon yes <laughs> <laughs> the, the team the team's back baby exactly We're back once yeah. again <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you, Eddie, so much like for taking time out of your day. And, and yeah, and to everyone watching, uh, please go follow him on Instagram and yeah, and follow his work. I will be sure to leave links in the description down below. So <laughs> wherever they are. Yeah. <laughs> wherever they're at. <laughs> Listen, ooh, 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 let me, let me <laughs> somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> all righty. You all have a fantastic day.